Welcome back to Farming Simulator and today we're going to have a look at building a custom cow pasture to fit in a field or other plot of land. Maybe based on the small one that's part of base game. Um, so it's going to be based on this one. Um, we're going to edit it so that um, in this case I'm going to be able to place it about here. Um, we're going to make it so that the fences extend to the hedge lines and then the um, the rest of the fences are gone and the, the nav mesh and the paintable area extends over the field. We're going to make it so that it will work with grazing over that area as well. So let's jump out to actually probably that um, if you're doing this to so i'm i've done this to fit in another area on this map for a let's play that i have ongoing if you're doing it for a save game that you currently have active don't do it in the save game take a copy of the map um do it in a separate mods folder with a separate copy of the map um don't use your actual save do all this first get it working and then port it across um, and back up anything that you edit so we're going to start off in our mods folder and the first thing you're going to want to do is unzip your map um so you're going to want 7-zip and just to do that right click on the map obviously easy dev controls is not the map go down to 7-zip and extract to the map directory um that's so that we can open the map i3d and import our new pasture in and get all the you know the placement and stuff right then i want to create a directory something like fs22 cow pasture to create a new directory right click new folder and then type in the name and then if we go in here um you're going to need a mod description file i will make this one available on my discord i'll leave a link for that below um basically it gives the um gives the game basic information for what you need um so you know its name it's called cow pasture we could do cow pasture for field and then whatever field it is we're going to use i've forgotten which one um you know or as i've got here in the description small cow pasture designed to fit in let's go for field x I can't remember the number on maple farm because that's the map that i'm using to do this um important things are i'll come back to so what we then do so you've got your mod description farm you've either created it yourself so that it's structured this way you could take one from another mod or you can download the one that's on my discord we then need to get the rest of the information for the small cow pasture from base game um if you've installed the game direct from giants it will be in your program files and then farming simulator 22 if you've installed it from steam then if you go into your steam library and right click on i think it's properties you can get um local files location that's what you need to do and it should look the same as this then i'm going to go into data and placeables and lizard and cow barn small and copy everything that's in here across into this folder which is what i've done already um so we're then going to go back to our mod description and what we want to do is make sure i'm just going to if i move that one up there and that one there we want to make sure that the um the icon file name is the same so store icon small cow barn it should be if you've just downloaded mine and you've got the xml file name if you haven't renamed it so cow barn small xml that's that bit done so we're going to save that and we're going to close that for now um so next step is to open up the cow barn small xml um give it a name so i'm just going to go custom cow last year i'd recommend naming it after whichever field you're making it for something like that um the image what you can leave that's going to load it from the uh, the base game but that's fine down here the i3d file we want to delete all of the bit that i've highlighted so we're just left with cow barn small dot i3d that means it will load the one that we are making edits to locally and then we're going to scroll down even further and we need to find the navigation mesh and we're going to do the same thing we're going to delete the bit that is highlighted here so that we just leave behind navigation mesh and dot i3d 
We'll come back to the XML file later, but for now we are going to save it. So go back up to your mods folder into the map and find the map i3d file. We're going to open that with Giants Editor. So you will need to have installed Giants Editor and down, downloaded that off of the Giants developer site and installed it. Once this loads up, we'll, uh, you'll need to maneuver yourself to where on the map you are doing things. And to orientate myself, I think we're up this way. Yep. So here is the field that we want to put our cow pasture in. We're then going to go to import and we're going to navigate into the folder that we created and open up the cow barn small i3d. That will open that somewhere on the map. Um, and what we need to do is if you just click left click on the arrows, we want to move it over so we can see it and start to place it where we want it for our new placeable. Um, so we need to rotate it. So we're going to click and hold on that to start the rotation. And then I like to type it in myself. because That way we get it nice and neatly aligned and just work on getting it placed where you want it to be as you've built it so i'm going to go there and there and there it gives me plenty of room to drive in put feed in and stuff make a note of these numbers so the the xyz position and the xyz rotation so that if you need to you can replace it later on so i'm just going to go and make a note of those so that's done we're now going to start changing things so the first thing i like to do is the nav mesh um because that's the bit that makes it visually look good because the cows explore the nav mesh most important thing, don't mess with the one that's there already. Leave that as it is because that has the bits that make sure the cows can get to the feed troughs and the water troughs to visually feed. And it means you won't get any warning messages. So we're going to expand this by clicking on the little plus sign next to it. We're going to go to the nav mesh root node and we're going to select that. Then we're going to go into create primitive plane. And we're going to bring that over to where we are working there we go so we can see we have a little tiny square over here middle click on it and drag it up into the nav mesh area we're then going to click on the scale bit and we're going to make it bigger. We do X and Z. You can leave Y alone. Um, and then I'm not going to push it right up to the hedgerows and we're just going to position it so that it's in the right place. So bring it down to ground level and then move it so that it touches the existing one and starts to build the nav mesh you want. I'm actually going to make this quite a lot bigger. It's quite a big area we're trying to cover. So we're going to go 50 by 50 and something like that. If we do it wider, we could just do this in a few chunks. Let's do that. So let's move it into roughly the middle of the field. Right, 70. No, nope, wrong one. 50. Right, 75. Too wide. There we go. Remember, this is just visually where the cows are going to be able to walk. Okay, actually, go over that way a bit. 75 might be okay. 75. Yeah, I think that's okay. So while still with it still highlighted, we're going to press Control D and that will duplicate it and give us another one, which we can then move down the field, making sure that they are overlapping slightly um, and just repeat that process 
you depending on the shape of your field you may need to rotate them um so if you do then we click on the not really very visible you see you've got these rotation rings here or you can type angles in in the boxes over here I don't want any rotation, so we're going to undo that um, and bring it back down to be at ground level. And I'm just going to do one more so that we have pretty much covered the whole field. Yeah, that looks okay. So that's all of that bit done. We want to bring this area in as well, I think. So we're going to go and do Control D again. Bring that all the way down here. And obviously this is too big now, so we want to make it smaller. We're going to do 50 again. It might be too big still. No, that's okay. That's okay. Um, so yeah, if we get it so that it's in line, I'm going to make it narrower actually. So, uh, 45, no, wrong one, we do 40 even. I want to get it so that it's in line with that fence post, so that makes placing our fence markers easier. Okay, now what we're going to do is go through and make each of these invisible. If you leave them visible, so we're just clicking on the invisibility, the visibility box. If you leave them visible, they will show up in game as a weird shimmering plane on the ground. So that's everything not quite done yet. Next, we need to go into shape and go to build nav mesh mask and select everything except zero. That gives us FE here in this box, and we can then copy that and we'll just go and paste that into each of the others. I'll get that done and I'll be back. So that's all done. That's where we're going to leave doing the nav mesh for now. We'll actually build the actual nav mesh later on. The next thing I want to do is fences. Um, so we'll click on the fences, and this enclosure has two fences. It has one that goes between these, and then it has another one which draws the box, which you're probably used to. Um, we actually want three fences. So we do want one that goes from here, and we just want to have it so that it comes across to the hedge line. Um, so we're going to take node two, and I'm going to move it so that it's in the hedge line. Doesn't have to be perfect, just good enough for what you want, okay? We've got these four nodes left and we really don't want it to draw the rest of those. So what we're going to do is we are going to go and go in to fences. Actually, we'll try it. We'll see. We'll do a control D on fence one and duplicate that. And then we will name this fence three. And what I'm going to do slightly lazily is del just delete those nodes. So we've still got four nodes left. Node six is here. That's where we want it. Our nav mesh, if you remember, if I just make this one visible, lines up with this fence post. So what I want to do is create a fence that goes like that. So we're going to take, we need Fence, fence post there, fence post there, and a fence post there. So fence post four, we're going to use as the end of our fence here. So if we put that so it's in the hedge and then line it up with this post, that should be okay. Let's go a little bit more that way. Um, and then I'm going to make that 17 because it's an easy number to type. Node 5, we are going to put at minus 17 and it should be fine just like that. We need to do work in the XML. Node 3, we're going to delete. We need to do work in the XML. I'll come back to that. 
Next job we're going to do is the foliage areas. And what we want to try and do is make a foliage area that pretty much matches the navigation mesh that we set up. Oh, I think what I'm going to do for that is actually turn back on the visibility for some of these just to outline it for us. Um, and then we'll have to make sure we turn them off again. So that will just make it a little bit easier. So foliage area one, I am going to use to cover this corner. So if we place this the inside where we think things are, it just makes it gonna make it look a little bit neater, I think. Um, so we're gonna start there. Our width we're going to bring over to all the way over to this line and then our height we are going to bring this way and line it up with the inside of that so that's covered that area we can probably do the rest of it in one but um foliage area two is just covering that a little bit which area three we are going to use to cover the rest of this area. Right, we're going to go about there for the start. The width that we're going to bring all the way over this way. Yes, I know I'm doing them slightly backwards. That's fine. Game should not care. And then height we need to take all the way down the field. To so about there. If you need to create a new one, I'm just going to demonstrate it. We don't need to, but if you want to need to create a new one, if you've got a more complex shape, then if you select the foliage area and do control D again, it will duplicate it for us. You would then rename it. Um, we'll do one just, just to show you, just to show you. Um, rename it, move it to wherever you need it. Um, we don't particularly need this, but I'm putting it in just to show you guys how to do it. Um, so that's in. Um, if you needed to rotate it for any reason, I'm going to turn off these visible planes now because they're kind of annoying. They make it hard to see the markers. Let's turn that off. And then if you needed to rotate it for something, um then select the rotation and rotate it um, that will move these points so bear that in mind um just gonna make sure that it stays within our field area i'm just putting it in just so that i can demonstrate how to add it to the xml you don't need to worry about that um for this one the level areas are just around the food if you want it to level it leave it as it is i'll show you in the xml how to edit it so if you don't want to level it if you want to manually level the area you want to use then i'll show you how to do that i would leave that fine paint areas we're going to hack a little bit so don't worry about that test areas i'm going to leave because i'm leaving it to you to make sure that it fits where you want it so it's just going to test the original small area and indoor areas, I think, only covers the feed bit, which is fine. So we'll leave that as well. So the next step is to export this. Now we've set everything up. So we've set our foliage areas. We've set our fences. We are going to cheat our paint areas. So everything should be OK. So what we want to do is go back up to Calbarn Small to the very top level. We are going to delete all of these translations. So we're going to put everything back to the zero, zero. That's quite important. So do that step, and then we are going to click on Calbarn Small, and we are going to Export Selection, and then click on Calbarn Small. Yes, it already exists. We're going to replace it, and then delete it from here. So just press Delete. That will remove it. and we'll uh, then open that up and do the last few steps so back in the cow pasture 
mod folder and we're going to open up the i3d file you just double click on it giant editor will open it um if it doesn't appear in the middle you forgot to take out the translations so go back and uh do that um and now what we need to do is build that nav mesh that we didn't build before so just open this up um check that you've got the fe in the shape section and you can see that some of these don't have that so that was a uh, mistake on my part so we'll copy that and do okay and we'll just go in and add those in so always worth checking this kind of stuff to make sure that you have done it because otherwise the giant editor won't see it as part of the navigation mesh so that's all done we all can also see that none of them have the visibility condition which is really cool so we're going to click on navigation root node we're going to go to create and nav mesh we need to change this radius to 1.2 it's telling it how big a cow is and then we just click create and that's done and there we have our nav mesh file here we need to go to file export selection and we click on navigation mesh in the mod folder and do the save and overwrite it and then we want to delete it from here and that's it for editing the i3d we now need to edit the xml file so now we need to update the xml to match the i3d file um, i'm going to start off with the foliage areas and adding in the extra one that we created so make a space and i'm just going to copy the one for foliage area three paste that in rename them to four and then we'll go down to the i3d mappings and create those so we're going to copy the ones for three again paste them in here rename them as four then we need to get the indexes from the i3d file so bridge area for start just copy that and paste it in then the width and we'll paste it in there are quicker ways of doing this you'll notice that the only number is changing is this one in the middle um so you could just change them i'm doing it this way just to make it easier because not everyone is so comfortable with this kind of thing but that's the foliage area created to enable grazing what we need to do is change it so that the foliage area rather than being a deco foliage as grass short we want it to be root type grass so we're going to copy that and paste it over each of these and that will put actual grass in the foliage areas so that will regrow and that will allow cows to graze then we're going to go back up here and we're going to sort out the clear area without deleting a piece of it So make some space and we're going to cheat this slightly and we're going to copy the all of the foliage areas so we're going to copy those paste them in here then we need to tell them it's a clear area not a foliage area and we need to delete the root type on the end that bit done the leveling area if you don't want the game to level the spot for you around the food troughs you can just comment this line out you might want to do it manually first if you just go into edit and select comment and then toggle single line comment that will let you comment that bit out next we're going to tackle the paint areas and we're going to do the same thing as we do the clear areas we're going to take the foliage area paste them in tidy it up a bit and then copy paint area and paste it over foliage area 
then change take ground type and copy that over fruit type. Okay, so that's that done. The indoor area is fine. Um, those are all fine. You might want to increase the capacity for milk or water. I'll also show you how to do automated watering in a second. Depending on how big it is, you might want to increase the number of animals you can put in. I'm going to increase it to 65. Um, you might want to increase how much food you can put in, so you can increase that. Um, if you want automated watering, you can just change false to true there. If you do that, I would suggest going up here and commenting out the line for the water trigger marker because you don't need it. Um, so we'll just comment that out, it just tidies it up visually. And then we need to sort the fences. So make some space. We're gonna copy all of the first fence. It's space in the wrong place, so we want it here before this line which closes off the fences section but we can then delete all of those the first fence only used nodes one and two yours might be different and we can delete all of those because our new fence we created used nodes four five and six so then going down to the i3d mappings we deleted node three so we're going to delete that here then node four five and six we need to renumber so like the foliage area we just go into the i3d get their node numbers and paste them in six there we go six and there we go so that should be everything so if we just save that we can load it up in the game and check everything looks okay just make sure this is saved as well so a really good quick check um that you've done things right is is your cow pasturing appearing in your list of available mods if it's not go out check the log file look for errors or if you know how to bring the debug up um, and then things we've got here are warnings because we don't have two of our mods zipped Okay, so in the game, well, let's try and place our new pasture, shall we? So animals, obviously. Um, and there we go. We need to rotate it that way. Um, I'm just going to use the edge of the field to get our fence at pretty much the right angle. And then we need to find the marker that we use, which was this fence post. Obviously yours will be different. And bang, and there we go. There is our new cow pasture. That's fit pretty nicely in the field. Wasn't quite square by the looks of it, but I think it's good enough. So you can see we have grass growing, or grass that will grow. Just turn off light mode. Um, and we'll put in some animals let's get a few holsteins i'm only going to put a few in initially just so we can check grazing works okay um you might want to do a little bit of landscaping kind of in this area or equivalent whatever area yours is just to you know you probably don't want a bit of grass there um, and then if we skip some time Okay, so it's the next morning. If we just check the menu, the cows now have some food. If we just jump up into the air, it's like they've grazed from most of the area. So the last thing I would suggest doing at that point is um, they've just taken a maybe just taking a small square in there. Fair enough. So last thing I would do is. Fill the pasture up and uh, just check that the grease, the, um, the nav mesh all looks okay. That does to me. Just going to skip another day and we'll just have a look, make sure that they graze from some of the other areas. 
so yep yeah, you can see that they've uh, now taken grass from the rest of the area um, this had grown between days so that's grazing working and cows are getting their food you'll see there's no water bar up here because we've put automatic watering on and that's why there's no marker there either so i'm just going to jump out show you a few little tips and uh to tie things up and that'll be it so the last step to do that i would recommend is zipping everything back up so we're going to go into the map first just go to the first folder uh, where you'll see the mod desk Control A selects everything and then 7-zip add to map name dot zip. Then Control X to copy that and paste that back in your mods folder and delete the unzipped version and then the same with your new mod. So go into the folder, Control A, right click, add to zip and then Control X to cut that and Control B to paste that. I would then copy this somewhere else and that's it. So if you enjoyed this video, please click the like button. Uh, comments, questions, suggestions below. If you're having massive issues, um, probably better to head over to my Discord and ask in the FS help section would be my recommendation. Um, I want to say thank you to the patrons and YouTube channel members. Appreciate you guys all supporting the channel. And uh, I will see you next time.